Welcome to this key concepts video about atomic structure. In this video, we will start by discussing how the current understanding of the atom structure was developed. We will then talk about what's inside atoms and how this relates to the atomic and mass numbers. Next, we will talk about the concept of isotopes and ions. And finally, we will go over the concept of relative atomic mass and discuss how we measure the mass of an atom. All materials are made up of atoms. The word atom was coined by the ancient Greek Democritus, who suggested that matter consists of small indivisible particles. John Dalton provided support for this theory in the early 1800s, when he noticed that the mass percentages of the elements in a compound can only change by fixed amounts. For example, nitrous oxide, N2O, is 36% oxygen, nitric oxide, NO, is 53% oxygen, and nitrogen dioxide, NO2, is 70% oxygen. Compositions between these are not possible. This rule, called the law of multiple proportions, is only possible if molecules consist of particles with fixed masses. But what do atoms look like? J.J. Thompson discovered in 1897 that atoms contain electrons and showed that the mass of the electron is much less than the mass of the atom. He proposed the plum pudding model of the atom in which negatively charged electrons are embedded in a sea of positive charge. Working between 1908 and 1913, Ernest Rutherford and his colleagues discovered a problem with the Thomson model. If positively charged alpha particles produced by the radioactive element radium are fired at a metal foil, most of the particles pass straight through without being deflected. However, a small number of particles are strongly deflected. This suggests that the positive charge of each metal atom in the foil is concentrated in a small nucleus at its center, and that the rest of the atom is mostly taken up by empty space. Niels Bohr further refined this model by suggesting in 1913 that electrons orbit the nucleus at specific distances and with specific energies. This model works well, but suggests that the electrons orbit the nucleus at specific radii. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger showed that this is not really the case. The Schrödinger equation describes the distribution of electrons around the nucleus as waves. Electrons in each energy are more likely to be found in some positions than others, producing a well-defined cloud of electron density around the nucleus. This is the most accurate model of atomic structure. An atom consists of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons in shells around the nucleus. Protons and neutrons may together be referred to as nucleons. Protons and electrons have charges of one plus and one minus respectively, but neutrons are uncharged. The mass of a neutron is only slightly larger than the mass of a proton, but the mass of an electron is much, much smaller, almost 2,000 times smaller. Electrons are attracted to the protons in the nucleus by the electromagnetic force, which operates over long distances. This force is termed electrostatic attraction. We sometimes think of electrons orbiting the nucleus, but this isn't quite the case. If it were, they would eventually spiral into the nucleus. In reality, the nucleus is surrounded by electron clouds, which have specific shapes and average radii that are constant and well-defined. Each electron in the atom has a specific energy, so we say that these energies are quantized. The protons in the nucleus repel each other also via the electromagnetic force. This force is termed electrostatic repulsion. The nucleus is only stable because this force is counteracted by an attractive force between the neutrons and the protons. That force, called the strong nuclear force, 
only operates over very short distances. All nuclei with more than one proton must contain neutrons as these contribute to the attractive strong nuclear force without increasing the repulsive electrostatic force. The number of protons in an atom is called its atomic number. Increasing the atomic number changes the element. The number of neutrons is usually equal to or greater than the number of protons. The sum of the proton and neutron numbers, i.e. the number of nucleons, gives the mass number. Therefore, the number of neutrons equals the mass number minus the atomic number. Because proton and neutron masses are very small, it's simpler to measure the mass in atomic mass units, also known as Daltons. 1 AMU is equal to 1 twelfth the mass of the most common carbon atom, which contains 6 neutrons and 6 protons. Free protons and neutrons actually have masses slightly larger than 1 AMU. The mass decreases when protons and neutrons form nuclei because some of the mass is turned into energy. This energy is released from the nucleus as the nucleons attract each other and the nucleus becomes more stable. Therefore, the mass of an atom is not exactly the same as the mass number, it's usually slightly larger. The mass number is always a whole number, whereas the atomic mass is a decimal number. For an atom to be electrically neutral, it must have an equal number of electrons and protons. Therefore, in a neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. If the proton and electron numbers are different, the atom is an ion. An ion with fewer electrons than protons is positively charged and called a cation. A negatively charged ion is called an anion and occurs when the electron number is greater than the proton number. The difference between atoms and ions is demonstrated by the structures of the Mg atom and the Mg2 plus ion. The nucleus of the Mg atom contains 12 protons, so has a 12 plus charge. A neutral Mg atom contains 12 electrons with a total charge of 12 minus. So the net charge would be 12 minus 12, which equals zero. In the Mg2 plus ion, there are still 12 protons in the nucleus, but two electrons have been removed. So the total charge is 12 minus 10, which equals plus two. Atoms of an element always have the same atomic number, but they may have different mass numbers due to the variation in the number of neutrons. Several neutron numbers are possible because there can be multiple stable arrangements of protons and neutrons in which the electrostatic repulsion between protons is counterbalanced by the strong nuclear force between nucleons. Atoms with the same atomic number but different mass numbers are called isotopes. An isotope of an element can be represented as a letter symbol with a superscript and a subscript to the left of the letter symbol. The letter symbol represents the element, the subscript shows the atomic number, and the superscript the mass number. Because isotopes contain the same number of protons, the electrostatic attraction between the protons and electrons does not vary. Thus, isotopes form bonds with very similar bond energies, producing materials with nearly identical physical properties. Some isotopes are unstable. Unstable nucleons undergo nuclear reactions to produce nuclei with more stable arrangements of neutrons and protons, and this usually changes the elements. Real samples of an element often contain a range of isotopes, so the atoms of that element can't be said to have a single mass. For this reason, we usually take an average of the atomic masses of the atoms in the sample. This is the relative atomic mass, or RAM. If there are two isotopes that are equally abundant, 
the RAM is halfway between the two isotopic masses. This is approximately the case for bromine. The natural element is roughly a equal mixture of two isotopes, bromine 79 and bromine 81. So the RAM is 80. And what happens if the isotopes are not equally abundant? We can imagine adding up the masses of all the atoms, then dividing by the number of atoms. This calculation is equivalent to multiplying each isotope's mass by its percentage relative abundance, adding these values together, then dividing by 100 according to this equation here. For example, naturally occurring chlorine is 75% chlorine-35 and 25% chlorine-37. So the RAM will be three times as close to 35 as it is to 37. The above equation gives RAM is equal to 35 times 75 plus 37 times 25 over 100, and this equals 35.5. If there are more than two naturally occurring isotopes, the calculation is modified to include all of the isotopes in the sum. So for example, magnesium consists of 79% magnesium-24, 10% magnesium-25, and 11% magnesium-26. The RAM is therefore equal to 24 times 79 plus 25 times 10 plus 26 times 11 over 100, and this equals 24.3. In the periodic table, each element is represented by a letter symbol with the number on the top being the atomic number and the number on the bottom being the relative atomic mass. The masses and relative abundances of isotopes can be measured using a mass spectrometer. In a mass spectrometer, the atoms are ionized. There are multiple methods of ionization. For example, the atoms can be bombarded with electrons or other ions to knock electrons out of the outer shells. The ions are charged, so can be accelerated by an electric field. The accelerated ions are then deflected by a magnetic field. The radius of the deflection is proportional to the mass to charge or m to z ratio. For example, a helium 2 plus ion would be deflected twice as much as a helium 1 plus ion. Because ions are deflected by different amounts depending on their m to z ratios, they are separated out when they reach the detectors. Measuring the deflection allows the m to z ratios to be determined. The m to z ratios of the detected ions can be shown on a mass spectrum. Each isotope appears as a peak or line in the mass spectrum. The relative abundance of the ion is equal to the intensity of the peak. And that's it for this video about atomic structure. Hopefully you've learned something about the structure of the atom, which forms the basis for all chemistry.